sorry, just contemplating things, contemplate, contemplating life and my investments and uh, yeah, everything's good. Uh, slightly unusual chair, uh, pretty cool, huh? Anyway, welcome, another new video, another new day. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to explain why Warren Buffett was wrong. Um, he should he lost his bet. He should give his money back. He was wrong. Um, yeah, that's what we're on about today. Thanks for tuning in. So for, for those that don't know um, what I'm talking about there, so um, a while ago, a long time ago actually, more than a decade ago, Warren Buffett had a $1 million bet that um, a, a tracker, an, an index tracker would outperform a fund, a hedge fund, mutual fund, call it whatever you want, but a, a managed fund, you know, where a, a fund manager is actively um, buying and selling and trading shares either short term or long term in an attempt to outperform the market i.e the the index so warren buffett bet one million dollars that the index would outperform a fund um yeah so if you don't know go google it um what actually happened was he won that bet over 10 years um he said the index tracker um outperformed the mutual fund or the hedge fund and uh, that's not actually the case because he's not in my opinion he's not comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges he's comparing apples to oranges so he put, he chose um, uh, the index fund that performs eight percent or ten percent each year over ten years perfectly good acceptable um, performance there but he then compared that to a hedge fund that didn't really perform very well. And um, let me explain, um, or let me give you some examples of, of hedge funds or mutual funds that have massively outperformed the market over 10 years. Um, you know, their, their history, their performance history is there for everyone to see. Um, you know, and I'm invested in, in three um, funds that have outperformed any tracker fund by a long long way and in my opinion Warren Buffett lost his bet he should give his money back um, yeah give your money back actually the thing is he uh, he actually donated the one million dollars to charity which of course Warren Buffett is a great guy he invests heavily or sorry he donates heavily to uh, charities there so Fair play to Warren on, on, on that. So, you know, don't give him his money back. Um, actually, he should he should donate an extra $1 million to charities. How about that? He lost his bet. He should donate another million dollars to charity because he, cha or he, he compared an index tracker that, you know, was quite good to a, a fund that, you know, was terrible. Um, and there are absolutely hedge funds out there that perform terribly. There are examples of hedge funds losing um, by huge percentages um, each year, especially over the, the short term recently. So, yeah, that's fine. But you need to go and look at the best funds available. And they're easy to find. I'm invested in three of them. Let me show you the three examples that I'm invested in. And you can see their performance over recent years. And it would result in Warren losing his bet. So there you go, Warren. You're wrong. So, uh, what were the details of that, that bet that uh, Warren Buffett made? So, um, he bet that uh, hedge funds would be outperformed by the, the index funds. But as I said, he, you know, he was comparing um, a group of hedge funds. So, he, he, ch he chose a group of five hedge funds that were, that were then invested in multiple funds below that. Um, and they charged uh, a management fee on top of um, each of those funds that were with, within five groups of hedge funds. So, um, it's, to, in my opinion, it's a, it's a little unfair. Um, you know, some, some of them, uh, okay, they're, they're charging an extra percentage 
for each fund in, in invested in in the um, the five hedge funds. Um, so you know you're going to to lose a percentage there. Um, so then he was comparing that against the S&P 500, which everyone knows about is is a great index tracker and has performed well year over year over year. So you know that that was always going to to um, result in a gain. So with that in mind, I'm about to now show you three um, funds that I'm invested in, show you their fees, show you their performance over the last um, 10 years and prove that it wasn't a fair comparison because if you are invested in the correct funds, um, then you can easily outperform any of the index trackers. Uh, so, all right, let's dive straight in and I'll show you the, the three funds that I'm invested in currently and show you their performance. Okay, so here we have um, the website Y Charts um, showing the historical performance for the S and P five hundred, um, and this data is widely available on you know from other sources. Um, I just like the the Y Charts service because it gives you a, a a nice chart here showing the performance for the last five years, but it also gives the discrete performance, i.e., the the individual performance of um, the S&P 500 each year um, going back way you know way back to 1998 but um, you know we're only interested in the, the more recent years um, so there is one small caveat uh, to this analysis in that um, I only have the last five year performance five years performance for the funds that I'm going to be comparing to S&P 500 here um, and Warren Buffett's bet um, was for the last 10 years However, I only have the performance for the funds for the last five years. Um, but we can make the assumption that if the results um, for the last five years or wh whatever the result is for the last five years, we can extrapolate that really to the to the last 10 years and, and assume the result would, would be the same. Um, and I will show you why, um, you know, I'm comfortable with that um, extrapolation once we look at the results. So... Here we are. So last year for the S&P 500, uh, the total performance was minus 4.38% and previous year to that was 21% uh, and so on and so on. And, and we are interested in the last uh, five years of the S&P 500 there. And what I will be comparing that to is three funds that I'm I'm personally invested in in each of these funds in, at, at different at different levels. However, I'm I'm you know, talking from experience here. I'm personally invested in each of these funds, so I know them very well. And the first one is uh, AXA Framlington Global Technology Fund, uh, GBP Fund Z GBP. Um, and this document here is called a fund facts or fact sheet or whatever you wish to call it. Um, and it is a document that is published by this fund each quarter and each year. And it gives you the, you know, a bit of background about the, the fund manager and, you know, his, his history and, and what he's done in the past. Um, it gives you the objective or the strategy of the fund and it also gives you a, you know, a description of how it's performed recently and, you know, that, is there any information that affects the uh, the fund or has affected it in the past. Um, it also gives you top 10 holdings. Not each fact sheet will give you top 10 holdings, might give you top five, might, might not mention any holdings at all. Um, but this one does, in fact, give you the top 10. Um, and you can see there, so Alphabet is number one and going through the list, lots of recognisable names there, Apple, Cisco, Visa, Facebook, you know, Qualcomm, Amazon, Salesforce, these are all very recognisable um, companies on the stock exchanges that many of us can invest in if we want to. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a good insight into um, the, the types of companies that this fund is invested in. And if we carry on scrolling down, this is exactly what we're interested in here. So the discrete performance over um, 12 months periods over the last five years. So... Um, between uh, you know between 2014 and 2015 it was that percentage 31.2 percent the next year 15 to 16 1.7 16 to 17 
is 46.8 and so on and so on. Those are the individual performances of the, of the fund over the last five years. And uh, the other thing we need to consider, and, and one thing that Warren Buffett has, has um, called out about the, or has, has always raised as a negative for any, any fund, are the ongoing charges or the management charges or their fees that they um, take for managing your money and investing your money for you and, and making these gains for you. And Warren Buffett has always said that funds charge so much that it doesn't really matter what you gain because they just claim they just claw all that gain back in their charges, which I disagree with. So with this fund, it, you know, it's ongoing charges here are 0.82%. So that means each year they charge you 0.82% of your total value of your fund. And you can see there the initial charge, i.e. how much they charge you to invest to invest um, any amount at the beginning. Here it's nil percent, zero percent. So so that's that one. Those are the um, that's the performance each year and and the uh, so yeah, there we go. There's a performance each year and the charge. Those are the two important numbers. So that's the first one, AXA Framlington. Uh, the other one I'm invested in is Bailey Gifford, uh, Bailey Gifford American Fund. Um, this is their fact sheet released uh, 31st of March, 2019. And you can see here, top 10 holdings, similarly to the other fact sheet, you know, Amazon Wayfair, Netflix, Tesla, Alphabet, Illumina, Mastercard, again, very recognizable companies that probably many of us are invested in. And, you know, there's a bit of information about uh, the types of investments they, they hold there. And what we are looking for is their discrete performance, or so, which is this, this table here. And we are in the, the Class B ACC. Um, let me just. Yep, yeah, so we are in the. I'm actually investing in the Class B, AC, Class B ACC, um, which is this one. Doesn't actually say at the top of the fact sheet, but you know, take my word for it, I'm invested in the, the Class B ACC. Anyway, even if I wasn't invested it, in it, this is their performance over the last five years. So. You know, 14 to 15 is 24.2 percent, then 4.4 percent, then 36.7 percent, etc., etc., up until last year. So there's their percentages and their charges. Let me just find where their ongoing charges are. They're always in different places. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> sorry, there it is, ongoing charge, 0.52%. Okay, uh, so that's the Bailey Gifford one. And the third one I'm interested in is the Linsell Train Global Equity Fund. Another, probably quite a well-known uh, fund. So here you can see the calendar year performance, uh, so 20, 2014, 2015, 2016, etc., is shown in this table here. Uh, so 2014 10.5, 2015 was 19.5 and so on and so on. And let's just find their ongoing charges. So uh, they, they actually break down their charges slightly different. So they have a management fee um, and I'm personally invested in the in the B um, funds. They have several funds, A, B, C, D, E, and they all have different levels of uh, management fees and ongoing charges. So I'm actually invested in the B. Um, so their management fee is 0.65% and their ongoing charge is 0.71%. So why is there two there? So if you, if you actually re read this, and I won't read it out because it's small print and you know it's a bit long-winded, but it um, the ongoing charge is effectively the management charge plus anything extra on top of that that 
any charges that they incurred over the over the um over that year so they're they're on so the the figure we need to concentrate on is the ongoing charge here which is 0.71 percent so again in the same ballpark as the other fund so there we go there's the three fact sheets and the historical performance of the s p 500 so what we're going to do now is dive into a spreadsheet that i've prepared showing the percentage gains each year for for those four you know the three, three funds in the s p 500 and compare them to each other so Let's swap over to Excel and we can continue the analysis. Alrighty, so this is a spreadsheet that I have prepared to, to make it, to simplify the analysis essentially, just to, to make it easier to look at as we go along. Um, so this is the S&P 500 percentage gain each year of the last five years. Um, and these are the, the percentages I took from the, the Yahoo charts, the Y charts website. And I'm um, making this. Well, I'm, I'm, the analysis is based on investing one thousand dollars on at the beginning of year one. So, if I invested one thousand dollars in the S and P five hundred on in year one, and uh, its performance in that first year was uh, thirteen point six nine percent, giving me a gain of one hundred thirty six dollars and ninety cents giving me a total at the end of that year of $1,136.90. And the next year was a 1.38% gain. So starting with your, so you're looking at the formula up here, so starting with your, your $1,136.90 and, 90 cents and uh, multiplying that by the 1.38% the gave you a gain of $15.69, giving you a total of one thousand. $152.59 and so on and so on each year um, calculating the percentage or calculating the gain that you would get from the percentage performance each year and at the end of the five years you will have a total of $1,503.34 so not so bad you know $500 from a five-year investment of $1,000 in, in the S&P 500 so pretty good. So let's now compare that to AXA Framlington. So in year one, their performance was 31.2% gain. They, um, so that would have gained you $312, sorry, giving you a total of $1,312. Um, and if you remember their AXA Framlington's um, ongoing charges was 0.82%. So that year they would have charged me or whoever invested that one thousand dollars um ten dollars and seventy six cents um so one thousand three hundred and twelve minus the ten dollars and seventy six gives you a total at the end of that year of one thousand three hundred and one dollars and twenty four cents so the next year they had one point seven percent so um that would have given you um a, a gain of twenty two dollars and twelve cents totaling 1,334. Their charge is the same, 0.82%, so they would have charged you $10.94, and leaving you a total at the end of that year of $1,323.18, and so on and so on, you know, using the percentage gain each year, minus in the charge each year, at the end of the fifth year, you will have resulted in $2,768.87. So let's compare that to the S&P 500, $1,503. Doesn't look so great now, does it? 2,768. So that's what you would have gained if you would have invested $1,000 in Action Framlington over the last five years. Uh, so now let's look at Bailey Gifford and a similar story, same analysis. So here's the percentage gain each year. This is what you would have earned each year. This is your total at the end of each year. This is the percentage charge each year. This is what they would have charged you each year. And uh, this is what you would have had at the end of each year if you'd have invested $1,000 in Bailey Gifford. So $1,235 dollars and 54 cents at the end of the fifth year you would have had two thousand six hundred and twenty six dollars and thirty five cents 
again, so comparing that to the S&P 500, not even close, is it? You know, both of those funds massively outperforming the S&P 500. And the final one, the Linsel Train. So this is their performance each year for the last five years. And this is uh, what you would have uh, gained each year in dollars. This is what you would have had at the end of each year. This is their charges. So the Linsel Train charge was 0.71%. Um, as you, if you remember, the, the ongoing charge include their management fee plus any extra charges, which came to a total of 0.71%. This is what they would have charged me or the investor um, each year. And this is what you would have had at the end of each year if you'd have invested $1,000 in Linsel Train. So after the first year, $1,097.15. At the end of the fifth year, $2,273.97. So comparing that to the S&P 500, again, it's not even close, you know, not quite double, but, you know, we're, we're getting, getting close to doubling your return in comparison to the S&P 500 there. So I think it's clear to see that, you know, if, if we extrapolate that um, analysis um, from the five years out to the, ne the next 10 years, it's, the, the picture is only going to get better and better for the hedge funds or the mutual funds there. It's massively outperforming the S&P 500 index tracker there. So there we go. Pretty, you know, um, easy analysis um, to perform. You know, you can you can do these analysis very quickly and, and compare what would be your the outcome if you invested some money in an index tracker in comparison to a mutual fund. Um, and and don't just believe the 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 hype or the or the believe the quotes of some people, um you know do your own research. That that's the important message here is do your own research, um and as I said at the beginning of the video, there are absolutely funds that do not perform as well as the S and P five hundred, but do your research and find the ones that do perform better, um. And as I said, I, I feel that Warren Buffett was not doing a fair comparison. He was he was choosing, in my opinion, not very good funds. He was choosing five fund five hedge funds that are made up of multiple um funds below that that all had very high charges as well in the sort of two percent, three percent range. Um and if you do your research and you find funds like these, like the Axa Framlington, like the Bailey Gifford, like the Linsel Train that have low um management fees or low ongoing charges and great and good performance each year you know that that is the that is the the golden ratio the low charge and the the high performance you know which will re result in in those gains so there we have it proof warren buffett was wrong i was right and yeah he he should uh donate another one million dollars to charity because i've proven it um i you know the the mutual funds hedge funds can easily and by a long way outperform the s p 500 thank you very much <laughs> all right that's it for today thanks for watching hope you found uh, the video interesting or entertaining today a bit more of a light-hearted uh uh, video today and uh, as I've proven Warren Buffett was wrong not many people will uh, um, be brave enough to say that but Warren you're wrong I have proven it there we go so thanks for watching thanks for tuning in hit the like button subscribe hit the bell comment share do all the YouTube things and uh, we'll see you next time and uh, looking forward to the next video um, back from the UK I head back tonight so Looking forward to going home as always um, and I will see you there.